You would think that across a 12-game slate for Friday, there would be guys we could feel great about at pitcher. Guys who are quality arms in good spots to get some strikeouts. And there's no one on this slate tonight I feel great about. There is no one I feel really good about. There's someone I feel okay about, but it's just one guy. 24 pitchers, only one guy I feel okay about for tonight. So it's a dicey slate, and that is difficult, but it does force us to dive dive a bit deeper, decide which of these non-elite arms can do well given their circumstances, which of the good pitchers in tough circumstances could succeed, who can bounce back from rough starts, and it's not easy. It's doable for sure, but it's definitely tough. We're going to break down those pitching options for today, let you know where we're going, and try to find some good stacks to get us solid point totals on FanDuel as well. Welcome on into the solo shop. That's right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and NumberFire.com. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a senior writer and analyst for NumberFire, here to break down Friday's 12-game main slate with lock set for 7.05 p.m. Eastern for today. Just a couple of weather notes on this slate. The first one is in Kansas City. Winds are out to left at 12 miles per hour for the Braves and the Royals. I'd upgrade hitters there a bit. It is also decently warm there, too. So upgrade hitters for the Braves and the Royals. The low temperature games for tonight are all out west. Those are in Oakland for the Mets and the A's, in San Diego for the Padres and Brewers, in Los Angeles for the Dodgers and Cubs, and in Seattle for the Mariners and Rockies. So downgrade batters in those four games due to lower temperatures, especially with things being a bit warmer out on the East Coast now. Not quite as warm in Boston as it has been uh, recently. And then also uh, Toronto a bit cooler if they keep the roof open. So keep that in mind. But in general, the colder games for tonight are the ones out west. We'll dive into the pitching preview, try to find some gems for tonight in just one second. But first, a reminder to make sure you are subscribed to the Number Fire Daily Fantasy Podcast feed. Wherever you get your podcast, the solo shot is here every weekday, uh, breaking down the MLB DFS main slate and also up over on the FanDuel YouTube page. No PGA next week because it is a team play event, but back with you the following week. And of course, UFC with Austin Swaim for big cards. Find all those here on the Number Fire Daily Fantasy Podcast feed. And if you like what you hear, leave us a five-star rating. The NBA playoffs are here, and you can turn crossovers into cash with FanDuel. Just visit FanDuel right now and place a $5 bet, and you'll get an instant $150 in bonus bets, win or lose. There is no better place to bet all the playoff action than America's number one sportsbook. Just go to FanDuel and sign up to get $150 in bonus bets when you bet your first $5. FanDuel, official sports betting partner of the NBA. Must be 21 plus and present in select states. FanDuel is offering online sports wagering in Kansas under an agreement with Kansas Star Casino LLC. Bonus issued is non-withdrawable bonus bets that expire seven days after receipt. Restrictions apply. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit fanduel.com slash RG. In Massachusetts, hope is here. Gambling helpline ma.org or call 800-327-5050 for 24-7 support. In New York, 1-877-8-HOPE-NY or text OPEN-Y. In Arizona, 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text NEXT STEP to 53342. In Connecticut, 1-888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org slash chat. In Indiana, 1-800-9-WIBIT. In Wyoming and Kansas, 1-800-522-4700 or in Kansas, ksgamblinghealth.com. Louisiana, Indiana, 1-877-770-STOP. In Maryland, mdgamblinghelp.org. And in West Virginia, go to 1-800-GAMBLER.net. Pitching preview for this Friday main slate. Drew Rasmussen comes in with a salary of 11-2. Good pitcher, but facing the Blue Jays. Could I, uh, I Singa is $10,800. Justin Steele is at 10-5. Nestor Cortez facing the Twins at 10-3. Martin Perez at 10-1. Michael Waka is at 96. We got Patrick Sandoval in Boston at $9,400. Johan Oviedo is $9,200. Charlie Morton trying to bounce back is 9,000. We have Luis Garcia, Mike Clevenger, Brady Singer, Tyler Wells, Tanner Houck, and Noah Syndergaard as the other guys at $8,000 or higher. Now, you hear those names, and a lot of them are okay names, but a lot of them are in very difficult matchups. Rasmussen against the Jays, Steel facing the Dodgers, Cortez against the Twins, Perez uh, against the Astros. It's very difficult. 
The one pitcher on tonight's site who I think is both a quality arm and in a good matchup is Kodai Senga. And as a result, Senga is going to be my top pitcher of the main slate. Senga is a guy I was pretty psyched to watch coming into this year. Projection systems were high on him, and they're pretty good about uh, setting expectations for guys joining the big leagues with uh, major league or like top end experience elsewhere. We've seen Senga twice so far, and he's looked really good. He, I'm willing to use him in DFS tonight as a result of that. Facing the A's, that definitely plays a role. 82 WRC plus against righties with a 137 ISO, and they don't draw walks, which is pretty big for Senga because that's the one area he has struggled a bit in his first two starts. He has a 13% walk rate in that time. The rest of the data is very good. He has a 12.2% swing and strike rate, which turns into a 31% strikeout rate. His expected ERA is 3.79. So his ERA under two is misleading, but still pretty good, especially compared to the rest of the guys on this slate. Now, both those starts for Senga were against the Marlins, and they're also not an elite offense. So we don't want to upgrade him much in going to a good spot against the A's, but projections like him coming in. The numbers are good so far. The matchup is good. The weather is good. I will take that with so few solid options for tonight. So Kodai Senga is going to be my top pitcher for tonight at $10,800. It is kind of high, higher than you like to be, but still worth it for me in my eyes. The second pitching slot is tough, and we're not going to get anybody in as good of a matchup as Senga's, at least not a top-end pitcher. I'm going to go Luis Garcia, 89, so technically our value play here, though my confidence in that is, if you can't tell, pretty minimal. Garcia's at home facing the Rangers, and that's not a bad matchup, especially without Corey Seager. 91 WRC plus against righties in the current active roster since the start of last year. At 143 ISO, 24% strikeout rate. That 24% strikeout rate for the Rangers is actually the highest uh, for an opposing matchup on the main slate. So the matchup is good. I am just worried about Garcia because he's had two difficult starts to open this year. His expected ERA is higher than eight, and the velocity on everything but his cutter is down quite a bit. We didn't see it get better in his second start. You will see that sometimes where guys lower in the first start, get better in the second one. Didn't happen with Garcia. I actually liked Garcia quite a bit last year, so this is concerning to see happen. Last year, Garcia, 13% swinging strike rate. So it's hard to know if he can get back to that, if he is in that same zone he was in last year right now. There's a lot of shakiness here, and that's reflected in my projections. I haven't projected for 5.1 strikeouts. For this slate, that's okay, but generally not great, and it's also not tremendous for this slate either. The hope, though, is that Garcia gets back to some of last year's form to take advantage of a plus matchup. He may not, which is why I'm hedging here in my voice, but... I think he has better upside than a lot of guys on this slate. So I'm fine putting him second, despite my skepticism. I think that Garcia is a worthy play for DFS for today. Because Garcia's our value play 89, it gives me leeway to go with a stud here. It's hard to find one that I, I truly love. I've given lots of consideration to Drew Rasmussen, but tough matchup with the Jays on the road. Not the best pitch count for him either. Charlie Warden may get strikeouts against the Royals, but... Struggles on the road, looked pretty rough so far this year. Justin Steele, I like a lot. I've used in both his starts so far, but has a high salary based on the Dodgers on the road. So I'm going to go Nestor Cortez here, but even he has his drawbacks. Cortez is facing the Twins, who are a pretty good team against lefties with a 123 WRC+. plus. That ranks second on the main slate. They have a 192 ISO. So that's good, and they're also in a pretty good spot for hitting, which makes it tougher to get enthused about Cortez. Cortez looked fine to open this year. Uh, he's gone um, eight or he's gone a 10 and third innings with three earned runs allowed, eight strikeouts and two walks. So it's fine. And that's again why there's a lack of enthusiasm here and a lack of conviction in putting him third. But Cortez does do things pretty well across his nine starts where he's been using fewer sliders, which is what he's done so far to open this year. He has 3.82 skill interactive ERA, 24% strikeout rate while letting up just a 32% hard hit rate. Last night's power outburst for the Twins may keep some people off of Cortez as well. I have Cortez projected for 5.5 strikeouts. It's a fine number. It's okay. Uh, and the $10,300 salary is a bit higher than you'd like, but 
He's just a fine number three on a muddy slate. So if you feel good about someone on this slate, run with them because I honestly feel like I can't feel great about anybody. I feel good about Senga, but uh, that's really it. So if there is someone you feel is in a good position, take that intuition, take that thought process and apply it because I'm not getting there with anyone personally. Trust your gut on this one for sure. Stacking is easier. So let's talk about stacks for the main slate. And it begins with a team that I don't tend to stack in the Guardians. Um, they're good offense, like an actual real world offense, but not a lot of power. So I think we can go at them tonight, despite the fact there's a lack of power here. They're facing Trevor Williams, who is in the rotation for the Nationals to start this year. Just two starts so far. Not the best of returns as of yet. Expected ERA for Williams is 5.12. Letting up a lot of balls in play with a 16% strikeout rate and a 2% walk rate, and 43% of those balls in play are fly balls. Given the Guardians' off offense, we can say for sure they're going to put the ball in play a ton tonight. Just a 16% strike area for them. So balls in play, get you upside, that's a good thing. It's just a question of how much they'll do with those balls in play. They have guys who are willing to run, so it's not all down to power. But typically, I do want power as well, not just rabbits running out there. So I'm high on the Guardians here, higher than usual, at least. And I do think they are a quality stack for tonight. You've got the two power guys here, Jose Ramirez and Josh Naylor. They have legitimate power, not just power relative to their teammates. So you can use them for sure. Naylor's salary is pretty low, too. For the rest of the guys, I need speed. If I'm not going to get a lot of power, I need speed. Steven Kwan, Andres Jimenez are the primary guys who will run on this offense. Ahmed Rosario will run, but offense so far for him this year has been pretty tough, so really don't want to go there. So for me, I want to be pretty strict with my Guardian stacks, making sure I'm using guys with very obvious passage upside. So Ramirez and Naylor for power, Ramirez for running as well, and then Quan and Jimenez as guys who will run, and I want to focus on that group of four whenever possible. So the Guardians are a good stack, but I want to make sure I'm focused on the guys who can make a difference in terms of their upside. The second stack is, it's going to be the race. I know it's been odd to watch them rattle off 13 or whatever straight it is so far, and it could wind up being fluky. It could wind up being they just faced a lot of um, lower level teams or got hot at the right time, but they keep on getting good matchups. They're facing Jose Barrios tonight, and I think that they have enough lefties on this roster to take advantage of Barrios' struggles. Barrios has had issues with lefties for a while now. Last year, he led up a 514 slugging percentage to them. Uh, he led up 20 home runs across 397 batters faced. Lefties slugged 474 against Barrios the year before that. This year looks like more of the same, but it's also bled into other parts of his game because his ERA is 11.17, and you can't get that just by struggling against lefties. He's led up a 52% hard hit rate with a 5.95 expected ERA. And that came against the Royals and the Angels. One of those is tough in the Angels. Other one is not. The Rays, definitely on the tough side. They're doing fantastic so far this year. We don't want to overweigh that, though, because it is a small sample. But if you look at them against righties, since the start of last year, it's a 105 WRC+. plus. It's not, like, amazing, but it is definitely good. If you give me a WRC plus of 105 with a good number of lefties facing a guy who struggled so far and really struggles against lefties... I'm going to get there for stacking. So I think the Rays are a great stack for tonight. Their salaries have obviously shot way up, but I think they're worth it. So the Rays, to me, firmly in the stacking discussion against Barrios. And I do think when we're doing this, Luke Rayleigh should be in that equation. He has left early for a pinch hitter just once. That's a concern for guys who platoon is the lefty comes in, does Rayleigh stay in there, uh, stuff like that. But it's only happened to Rayleigh once. It was in the fifth inning, so it is very tough if that happens again. But outside of that one game, he is finishing games. 194 ISO for Rayleigh against righty so far uh, since the start of last year. So I think he works really well here alongside all the other lefties. So favor the lefties for the Rays. Obviously, a Rosarena runs a lot, so don't need a ton of power from him. But I would pre prefer to land on the lefties more often than not when stacking this Rays offense. Now, this is a 12-game slate, which means you don't need to get super weird to be weird to be different on this slate. But it is a big slate. I kind of want to shoot for some upside, especially because I have no idea what's happening at pitcher. So I want to shoot for the stars. And 
That third stack for me, that contrarian stack, is going to be the Baltimore Orioles. They're facing Mike Clevenger. Clevenger so far has had good results in his two starts. They have 3.48 ERA. One star was against Houston. That's very impressive. But the other was against the Pirates, and he let up four runs in five and one-third innings there. That's one point of concern, struggling against Pittsburgh. The other concern is the underlying numbers for Clevenger. Even with a 3.48 ERA, his expected ERA is 8.45, 8.45. His skill interactive ERA, 5.43. He's not getting any whiffs with a 7.5% swing and strike rate, hard hit rate, 42%, fly ball rate, 47%. So Clevenger is not getting whiffs and teams are making hard contact against him. It just hasn't lined up well to score runs against him. Now, Clevenger is throwing harder this year than he was last year. Uh, he's almost back to the deal we had before his injuries. But for whatever reason, opposing batters are seeing him really well. The chase rate against Clevenger is by far the lowest of his career. The contact rate is the highest. So maybe the return to higher velocity will help. And maybe those underlying numbers across two starts are a blip. But the numbers that stabilize quickly say Clevenger could be due for regression. And I don't think the Orioles will be very popular for tonight. I'm going to make the leap of faith with him here. It is risky for sure, given that Clevenger has had good results and they're not going to be super popular for a reason, but I think the Orioles are a good play. So the Baltimore Orioles to me, a really fun option for daily fantasy for tonight. It also helps that the Orioles are a good team. They're a good offense. They have a 107 WRC plus against righties, 40% fly ball rate, plenty of speed. So our risk taking comes with upside. That's a great trade-off in my eyes. Gunnar Henderson specifically has been saddled with a bunch of lefties, now gets to face a righty. He still has an 11.8% barrel rate despite all the lefties, so he'll run. I'm going to be high in here. Henderson, to me, a really quality option within these Orioles stacks. Hopefully, Anthony Santander is back in there. He was available last night, so we'd love to see Santander back in the starting lineup as well. Things to watch for this Friday main slate. The Yankees are facing Louis Varland tonight at Yankee Stadium. Varland's not a bad pitcher. In five starts in the majors last year, 4.14 skill interactive ERA. But in that time, he did let up a decent amount of hard contact, decent number of fly balls. So the Yankees not going to be low rostered like the Orioles will, but definitely in play for stacking, for one-offs, whatever it may be, the, the Yankees could put some in the seats for tonight. The Padres are a team that uh, could also put up some power numbers despite bad hitting weather in San Diego. They're facing Eric Lauer whose velocity is really low to start this year. That may have been why the Brewers pushed everybody back a day. Not sure about that, but may have been. A lot of fly balls for Lauer, a lot of hard contact. The Padres, 114 WRC plus against lefties. I think that on a lot of slates that aren't 12 games, the Padres would be a top three stack. Uh, so definitely a viable stack, along with the Yankees, in addition to the three we discussed earlier on. Another spot to go if you want a lower roster stack, and this is risky, is the Pirates. Could go bad, but they're facing Jake Woodford. His transition to the rotation hasn't been super smooth just yet. A lot of hard contact and fly balls, very few whiffs. So the Pirates, you know, they don't have a lot of guys, especially with no O'Neill Cruz, but we can pick uh, some one-offs here if we want. I think they do work. So Pirates, Padres, Yankees are the other stacks to consider. And the top three stacks tonight are the Guardians, the Rays, and the Orioles. Let's finish up here with some dinger calls for today. I mentioned that Louis Varlin lets up a lot of fly balls, a lot of hard contact. So I feel like I got to go Aaron Judge here. I know I've, I've not made him a dinger pick so far this year. So I don't think it's like too big of a, a fallback option there to go with. But um, Judge, four home runs so far. I think he makes the number five for tonight going up against Varlin. For the fun one, let's go Gunnar Henderson. Not a huge fly ball guy. So again, that, that could come back to bite us, but. He's making hard contact right now. Uh, pretty good power numbers in the minors as well. So we'll go Aaron Judge and Gunnar Henderson as our two home run calls for Friday night. That is all that we have here for today and this week here on the Solo Shop. But we are back with you once again next week on Monday, breaking down the main slate as always. Make sure you're subscribed to the Number Fire Daily Fantasy Podcast feed wherever you get your podcast to get that as it goes live. If you've got any questions for me, I am on Twitter at Jim Sonis. 
J-I-M-S-A-N-N-E-S. You can also follow the FanDuel Podcast Network at FanDuel Podcast. want to thank you all for tuning in for today. Good luck to you with your MLB DFS lineups. Have a fantastic weekend. We'll talk to you once again on Monday. This has been the solo shot right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network.